We totally love everything about our four-wheel camper Hawkshell. Well, except for a few very minor things that are easy to fix. Here are the first five fixes that you will want to consider when you get your new four-wheel camper. If the factory hasn't already offered them, at least as an option. I call these fixes because they should be standard, or at least offered as options, in my humble opinion. Some forums, like Wonder the West, offer various solutions to some of these problems, but here's what we did. These five fixes are simple, cheap, and worth every cent. Let's get started. Fix number one, get a screen door grab bar. The first fix a lot of people make is the most common. When you're inside the camper and the door is open but not latched, you can't easily reach out and pull it shut because all you can grab is screen. So a lot of people buy these screen door bars, they attach this screen door, and they're very convenient. Fix number two, add screen door slider knobs. The second fix that we made is also on the screen door. The screen door slider has these little nubs that are hard, hard to grab onto. So I went to the hardware store and got a couple appliance knobs. One has a bolt, one has female threads, and I just drilled a hole in the, in the slider. So no matter what side you're on, it's much easier to grab on the outside. Fix number three. Modify the obtrusive push bar for raising and lowering the top. Uh, we love our four-wheel camper. Uh, we're not crazy about the pull bar and there have been a lot of uh, solutions to modify the pull bar and so this is how it works. Uh, Pulls down the uh, backboards and, and it also pushes it back up and then it folds away. However, it sticks down about two inches in the front and maybe about eight or nine inches in the back. And that's a that's a headbanger. We're not really crazy about that. But I'll show you what I did. I got a one inch square aluminum tube, so it's much lighter. I got a heavy duty hinge and mounted it so the hinge is about four or five inches higher. And uh, I, I had to add another board to give me plenty of uh, uh, places to attach the hinge securely. Um, the, the next thing I did was put a, um, simple hardware handle on the uh, on the end of it uh, using two square uh, uh, angle brackets. They attach the square tube and uh, makes it much easier to pull. So the only problem with the handle on my uh, square tube pull down bar is the sharp corners on that piece of metal. I should have maybe cut those off, but instead I got some uh, little furniture tips, rubber furniture tips. They don't quite fit on, so I'm going to warm it up and uh, push it on. Fix number four. Add an inside light that you can reach from outside the door. Nice night. The sky is dark out in the boonies and the stars are amazing. But I need to reach inside the camper to grab something. Unfortunately, the installed lights are way up high. It's really convenient to put a little light down low by the door where you can reach it from the outside. These lights are bright, cheap, and easy to install without wires or drilling holes in your camper. 
and the batteries last one to two years because we don't leave it on much. And fix number five, change out the thermostat for one that goes down to 35 degrees F. This is the original thermostat that came in our four-wheel camper Hawk shell. On the top is the control where you set the temperature and it only goes down to about 50 degrees, which is basically off. Unfortunately, most of our nights probably are at temperatures lower than 50 degrees, so that doesn't do us much good, and you end up staying awake to turn it on and off manually. This is the new Honeywell thermostat. You can turn it on for heat or off and you can set the temperature down to 35 degrees F so that prevents any freezing and saves propane. Okay this is the Emerson thermostat here. There were two blue wires attached to the W and the R terminal. You should label them with little stickies that come with the new thermostat, W and R, and attach them to the R terminal here and the W terminal here. The uh, four-wheel camper wires were too big to attach easily, so I've got a jury-rigged alligator clip here, but it works fine. Notice both thermostats have a circular dial that you can turn. Uh, the original thermostat was set on 0.4, so I set the new one on 0.4, and this adjusts the cycle time. As you can see from the Honeywell instructions, this is a warm air standard heating system, so it has a cycle setting of 0.4, much quicker than, say, a steam or hot water system. It looks like Four Wheel Campers now offers a digital low temperature thermostat. Kudos to them. I would prefer not to have a backlit digital display that lights up the space and adds a phantom current load on the battery, even if it is a small one. So you might consider a non-digital garage thermostat for your older model or even a newer camper if that light annoys you. Well, those are our first five fixes that you might want to consider when you get your new four-wheel camper. They will really make your life in the camper easier. I'll put links and costs in the description. Let us know if you have other solutions to these problems. Hopefully, four-wheel campers will incorporate some of these fixes in the future, if they haven't already by the time you view this video. Thanks much for watching, and please subscribe as we'll get into some great outside improvements next.